Hi everyone, Diane Palacio here with the Quality Assurance and Compliance team. Welcome to this week's edition of the Right Way Wednesday. So today we're going to be talking about falls assessments. Uh, generally, falls assessments fall into two buckets, if you will. The first being identifying patients that are at risk for falls, and the second being patients that have unfortunately already sustained a fall, and what do we need to assess in order to help prevent future falls for this resident, as well as, of course, take care of any injuries that they sustained when they had a fall. So before we get started, I just wanted to go through some statistics. Um, according to the CDC, one in three adults aged 65 and older fall each year. Falls among older adults are the leading cause of injury and death and the most common cause of non-fatal injuries and hospital admissions for trauma. Over 95% of hip fractures are caused by falls. People aged 75 years and older who fall are 45 times more likely than those aged 65 to 74 to be admitted to long-term care facilities for a year or longer. The rates of fall-related fractures among older women are more than twice those for men. So it's pretty clear that extensive research has been done uh, related to falls in the elderly population. There is uh, so much information av available in the literature about falls and falls prevention. Um, and really it all comes down to identifying the falls risk. Um, even the state surveyors, when they come to our facilities, that's one of the tag items that they're looking at is falls and how have falls been addressed and what, what programs or strategies are being implemented to prevent falls going forward. So it is a pretty important topic for healthcare in general, healthcare facilities, particularly for the elderly. So at Health for Heritage, we developed the Defying Gravity program, which is an excellent clinical resource. I strongly encourage everyone who hasn't or isn't familiar with it to uh, take a look in the clinical strategies box folder for Defying Gravity. It's a endless resource of information about falls, falls assessments, falls, um, training, various programs to help prevent falls, so on and so forth. So by all means, um, become familiar with that. It is a great resource. Um, and it's intended to, to focus on early identification of those that are at risk for falls in order to promote a more comprehensive and holistic interdisciplinary approach to preventing falls going forward. So it's more comprehensive than the typical falls and balance programs that um, we see in a lot of SNFs in that it uh, specifically targets interdepartmental communication. It specifically looks at follow-up strategies for patients that have had, had falls or even those that have been on a falls prevention program, routine follow-up to ensure that the program is still effective um, or if it needs tweaking, that kind of thing. So um, also focuses a lot on education about falls and falls prevention and of course implements wellness programming to help um, the continuity of falls prevention in facilities. So it is very comprehensive in that um, manner. So the key to preventing falls, of course, is identifying those that are at risk for falls. So what kind of risk factors are we looking for? Well, generally there's two categories. There's the intrinsic risk factors, which of course relate to the patient themselves. So things like muscle weakness, joint stiffness, pain, dizziness, um, those type of factors that would contribute to falls in a patient. The extrinsic factors, however, are the greater environment in which the, the resident resides. So that can be environmental factors, the types of floors, um, the schedule where floors are cleaned may not be a great schedule and wet floors could contribute to falls if, if they're being cleaned at you know, nine in the morning when everybody's trying to get to breakfast. Um, things like footwear, even medications is an important factor in falls prevention and something that certainly when we're doing a falls assessment we want to look at. So um, continuing on that, there's uh, numerous standardized tests in the Define Gravity um, folder that address the intrinsic factors. So you can find an awful lot of information uh, or tests, standardized tests and measures that specifically look at balance, they look at gait, they look at um, various other factors such as base of support, equilibrium reactions, ability to respond with eyes open versus eyes closed, that type of stuff. So of course, excellent assessments of the intrinsic um, factors which could lead to falls. Um, again, I already mentioned medications. There are a lot of medications that have side effects such as lethargy or dizziness. Um, even the medication schedule can have an impact on whether the patient is at risk for falls or not. So strongly recommend that medications are something we assess when we are looking at falls prevention. Um, or 
identifying patients that are at risk for falls. Um, environmental factors, there's not always anything we can do about all environmental factors. The type of flooring is obviously not something we can easily replace in most facilities, but then at least being aware of um, that, that that may be a problem so that we can appropriately educate patients and caregivers about that barrier. Um, but also there's a lot of very easy environmental fixes that, that could really reduce the risk of falls. Picking up scatter rugs, for example, is a pretty easy one. Ensuring adequate lighting in hallways and stairways is a pretty easy one. So certainly we don't want to overlook uh, the environmental contributions to falls risk. The assessment of patients is somewhat similar, regardless of whether they've had a fall or whether we're looking at them in terms of their risk for falls. We're still going to look at the extrinsic factors and the intrinsic factors. Obviously, if somebody has already had a fall, um, our focus is going to be on um, helping them to recover from that fall and the, any injuries that they sustained during that fall. But of course, the long-term plan, once those injuries are resolved, is of course to look at it at all contributing factors. So part of our discharge planning, part of our um, goals and our plan of care should always be dish, uh, falls um, prevention, uh, particularly for patients that have had falls in the past because it is also well documented that patients that have had previous falls um, are at a greater risk for subsequent falls. Um, so certainly we want to make sure that we have all possible strategies uh, to prevent falls um, in place. Again, that means looking at medications, flooring, lighting, footwear, uh, their schedules. Um, if a patient has had a fall, we need to look very carefully at what were they doing when they had that fall? What was the lighting like? What, what location did they have the fall in? Was there any factors that contributed to it? Uh, was anybody present? Did anybody witness it? I mean, we need to do a really thorough assessment of a fall when it happens to really understand the circumstances under which that fall happened. Um, while certainly muscle weakness, joint pain and that type of thing contributes to falls, very often there are also the extrinsic factors that just help to exacerbate that risk and, and create the circumstances for a fall. So um, important that we do not overlook those um, ex external factors. So for documentation on your evaluation, you're going to um, obviously document on all of the intrinsic factors. So once you've looked at muscle weakness, range of motion, pain, sensation, proprioception, vestibular functioning, um, all of that would need to be thoroughly assessed with, um, with false prevention in mind because you want to have a baseline of this is how the patient functions in order to identify First, if they're at risk now, but to have a baseline for future assessments um, should they be needed. Also, um, of course, this is the foundation for our plan of care and for our goals. Um, we want to address exactly what factors put that particular individual at risk for falls. Um, and again, in our documentation, prior level of function, you want to definitely expand upon that, what the patient's doing their um, level of activity within the environment, within the community, um, what activities they participate in, um, how they get there, their quality of gait, the assistive devices they use, all of that again is helpful not just to establish a baseline, but to have insight into the patient's lifestyle and roles and um, activities that again could put them at risk for falls. Um, so documenting all of this, of course, uh, there are narrative boxes in Optima as well. And in Health Max, where we can document some of the environmental challenges, so certainly those extrinsic factors cannot be overlooked when we do assess falls. Um, so hopefully this has been some helpful uh, information um, for dealing with falls assessments and kind of identifying the various risk factors that need to be assessed and documented, of course, when we are assessing falls. So I um, appreciate you joining us today. I hope this has been helpful. I would refer you again to the Defying Gravity program. It really is a great resource. And with that, uh, have a great day. Thank you.